guidance. To ask a question which says, I have two choices, which road should I take? I have two options. I have two things that I'm thinking about. Can you tell me which one I should choose? That is not a real question. It must be understood that there are no correct answers. In order for guidance to be given in this particular domain, there must be heartfelt sincerity. Sincerity is not a must, but if it is not present, there is no point in speaking. General questions about how do you calm the mind? How do I do this? Anything that is prescriptive is not sincere. Therefore, that can, there can be no guidance. I've heard you say on a couple of occasions that repeated exposure to the truth um, is what's necessary in order to rewire the brain. And I've experienced that to some level through your work. I've invested in some of your direct truth podcasts and, and they've been really helpful um, in getting a better understanding. Um, my question is for myself, your work is the only place or source for me to um, expose myself to the truth. Um, um, what I wanted to know was where do you go to expose yourself to the truth? Do you visit your own work that you've done in the past to expose yourself or is there something else that um, you're immersed in, in in order to expose yourself to that truth on a regular basis? My exposure comes from the dedication and the devotion to the truth. And because of that dedication and devotion, there seems to be a place that I'm that has no name from where it comes. And that source, that well, whatever it may be, and from where, wherever it arises, that is that is what I consult. Is is devotion, dedication, uh, d desire with a capital D, sincerity? Is it a is it a choice? People who are uh, a person who is dedicated to something, um, it doesn't come through a choice. It usually is something that is visceral and is, and most of the things that are. Um, truly otherworldly in this lifetime for any human being are generally not the things which they choose, but uh, which choose them. A human being is always chosen when it comes to things of um, purity and devotion and genuineness, sincerity, all of these things. How do facts tie into the truth? You know, words are dangerous because each comes with their own definition as to what is a fact and what is an opinion and what is a belief and what is truth. Um, generally, those who look for facts are looking in the material world. They're looking in the um, phenomenal world uh, in science and literature and research uh, and those kind of things. That's where facts tend to reside. The person who is looking for the truth is not beholden to science. Uh, he, he is not beholden to laboratories and research and things that the limited things that a human being fabricates uh, or even th in the limited means through which they discover things um, in, in the world. So the truth is much more fundamental and far reaching than something that is simply a fact. Can guidance be distinguished from advice? Once again, these are more words. Uh, there's, there's no definition to these things. Um, can I ask one more question? Yes. So what I have seen is that it's absolutely true that whenever I was sincere, guidance did come to me. 
but sometimes I ignored it because of you know my general sort of suspicion against advice and prescriptions so I was trying to understand is there a way where, where like I can be better at no, I don't I don't think that I don't think that you ignored it because it was a prescription I think it, generally when someone tends to ignore advice um, it's to be honest advice should be ignored because it is always prescriptive and the person seeking it is looking for prescriptions and the person who's giving it is giving prescriptions so generally it's ignored because of ego and just as it conveniently turns out advice should be ignored because it is always menial and it is never the truth and unless something is the truth it can only lead to more problems when you are given answers the answers only lead to more questions therefore it's a circular chase and human beings spend their entire lives chasing and they never truly find the thing and that applies to every single human being and that isn't because they lack the potential to do so but it is because they believe in answers they believe in rights and wrongs they believe that this is the correct way and that is the incorrect way therefore they seek mentors and read books and listen to spiritual people and listen and follow the path of self-help and self-development and it's all complete waste Good evening dr gupta Hello. uh whispers uh, if there's any place for compassion at all or does someone have to walk their own journey completely by themselves so the only reason that you know the word compassion is because you came into the society and that word was given to you and it was given to you as a way of something good and what society does is it tells you that okay these are the good things and these are the bad things so look for those things and avoid the other things um these things have no meaning when the the, the trouble with society and this is what human beings don't understand is that society tries to tell you to chase things that generally come naturally and all these things that human beings chase they aren't real things there's no such thing as compassion it doesn't exist um, when the reason it doesn't exist is because the human being chases it the human being puts it on the wall and says this is a good thing to chase i should become that and then they turn it into a judgment and say well i have not been that i need to become more of that and all of a sudden they look at their life and they see when they examine the clock and they examine the calendar and they notice that 75 years have gone by and they're still chasing the words a person who chases compassion will never be compassionate enough a person who chases love and goodness will never be loving or good enough when ever a human being lives and worships at the altar of words and concepts they are signing a contract for failure is the truth subjective no does effective not that it's good or bad um but does effective guidance require a master outside of prescriptions um not like hammering a nail but is artistic like god is there any such thing i guess i had a question in there somewhere well it it would benefit you more to not dress up the question into a summary and ask the raw thing that you want to ask um <clears throat> does effective guidance have to come from a master like do i need so, so so there's a reason that you're asking that question so do it does affect say, um, why are you asking that question that's a great question um i might come it back up it didn't just it didn't just come from nowhere right right i guess it comes from you in this this moment and having a not that not that you know but having a being able to talk to you and stuff it it feels like you have guidance for me 
even from asking the question about this, like you're the master in this situation. That's where the question comes from. I think the, the, ma the masterfulness really lies in the nature and the quality and the depth of the sincerity. Um, I appreciate guidance. That. Guidance cannot come from prescriptions. And all that is unfortunately available in society, in the world, in any corner of the world and in any domain is prescriptions. And in fact, so much so that uh, to suggest anything other than that would be ludicrous uh, because it's kind of like going to the ocean and denying water. Um, that is all that people have been subject to, and that is all that human beings know. Therefore, guidance cannot come from the world. Guidance cannot come from society, precisely because it is all founded upon something that is not real. And if something is real, if something is not real, then anything that arises from that foundation is sheathed in unreality. Right. Would would my questions be more sincere if I was more sincere, if that makes sense? I know it's a weird question, but does a sincere person have better questions, like more to the point ones, like ones that... You know? Sincerity tends to mature over time the more that one is exposed systematically to truth. And so it isn't about chasing sincerity. Um, if the person has the DNA for the truth, to seek the truth, and the more they expose themselves to the truth, their, the nature of their questions begin to change because the orientation of their interiority begins to change and cosmetics, and it tends to move more towards the fundamental nature of things. I feel a gravitational pull to play societal games. I, I, and I, I feel like I can see a lot of falsehood. Um, but it feels like I have to partake on some level to just, I don't know, get by living in a city, um, how do I maintain sincerity? How do I? Well, th there's, no, there's no requirement to leave society and to move into a cave. One certainly may if they wish, but there's no requirement to do so. It is not either or. Um, so the, the sincerity does not live in society. Uh, the sincerity lives within a particular human being. Therefore, uh, living in a society does not preclude one from seeking the truth. In fact, living in a society so easily reveals the falsehoods that in some ways it makes it easier to see truth. So long as one understands through some degree of rigorous understanding, um, and some degree of exposure to truth on a systematic and continual basis, that all that he sees in the outside world is false. It is entirely false. And that is not an easy thing to see because it is natural for the human being to believe that yes, while I see this is false and that is false, how can everything be false? That just cannot be. And that one thought that one belief, as logical as it may sound, keeps the human being on the hook forever. Whenever I inquire, of, um, who am I? I understand, maybe at an intellectual level, I'm. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, you know, if if X person says, "Well, I did it and it worked for me, and I transformed," so be it. But you can ask that question all you want. And it's just going to get you to, to intellectual intellectualness. It's all it's going to do. And so I, I think that's what human beings have to understand. They don't have to force the understanding upon themselves um, because that doesn't work. But through some form or fashion, in some way, at some time in their life, 
um, the realization has to dawn that all these things, and even what you're saying now, you got from a book, um, all these things that who am I and spirituality and self-help and uh, they seem to be sacred cows, um, but they're complete falsehoods. The, the content itself may not be false, but it is it being presented as a methodology is completely false. You know, one could say, get into the present. No, that isn't false, but go ahead and try. So to actually say that is, um, it is simply an unserious person who would say that. And so you have to understand that people just like to talk, do this and do that and things that sound nice, but no one's ever, no one ever realized like generally, genuinely achieves or has a complete realization of the very things that they high-mindedly speak about in these spiritual books. No one's enlightened. They just talk nonsense and rubbish. It just sounds nice and it's flowery and you can put it on Instagram and you can put it on the board and on bumper stickers, but you can ask these things to the cows come home and at the end of the day, one must examine the evidence for themselves. Are there Buddhas walking around? despite the fact that the Four Noble Truths have been on the shelves for thousands of years. You know, these things don't work. And human beings are continually moving towards them as if they do, and every single one of them fails. So uh, if I can ask another question just real quick. That in itself, like, understanding that in itself that it's such a subtle prescription that i'm doing that my sincerity is basically not not authentic well it isn't that subtle i mean to do it isn't that subtle to do a spiritual prescription you know to ask yourself who am i okay what you go ahead i mean once again never believe me go ahead and do it spend say i'm going to do this for six months or a week or one day see where it gets you is one of the truths that we are fundamentally always alone? You know, we suffer alone. We... Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's a good question. It is absolutely correct. If I want a financial freedom, uh, but at the same, I know, but at the same time, I'm comfortable right now at my spot. That's the reason I don't have financial freedom. But at the same time, like, there's nothing that you really can't do and nothing about it. But... At the same time, I really want it, but I don't know. But that's where I kind of get stuck. But I want to get understanding of uh, certain type of questions. Well, generally, people when they want they, and they don't find themselves pursuing it, it's because it would be nice to have, and the desire is not visceral. That's why these things happen. Are you free? Uh, it is impossible to answer that question, because the vessel that you ask to put water in has holes in it. Therefore, you don't have a clear understanding of what freedom is. Therefore, the language with which I answer the question, though it may be English. Is it possible to sincerely seek guidance without masking a desire for a, a, an actual ask for prescription? Well, I think it's I think it's important to understand, and it would be perhaps some degree of relief to understand for some that there should not be any shame in the fact that all that one has in their arsenal is to ask for prescriptions. When that is the only thing that you have ever heard of, and that is the only thing that you've ever been taught. And that is the only language that, you, that you've ever been exposed to in your entire life, which is basically everybody, then what else can you possibly ask for other than a prescription? There, I have clients who I've been working with for years and years, and even they have to stop themselves. Not that, not that they should stop themselves, but they stop themselves because they have recognized after years the futility despite them having masked in their asking, they have asked questions uh, without using the word how to, 
so that it wouldn't come across as a prescription, even though it was exactly looking for a prescription. Um, so everyone will do it because that is all they know. And so long as one understands that, then they can move away from any type of hesitancy they have towards it and not ask it, but to recognize that that's why they are where they are is because of the conditioning of society. And having recognized that, this gives them a new beginning to begin to understand the futility of prescriptions and not turn no prescriptions into some rule to follow, but to genuinely look behind it to see why that is the case, as opposed to just making that some ideal to live up to. May I ask a follow on? Mm -hmm. Through various circumstances, I've seen through to an emptiness of pursuit, but I don't have a deep enough understanding <laughs> and it feels like a holding pattern or it's not exactly the right word. I don't see places where I can find an understanding because the the language that I would use for this place isn't doesn't seem familiar and it doesn't seem like there are people in my sphere in any case who yeah I don't even mean individuals in my personal life I don't I don't know the vocabulary to move through this place not that it's about words I'm not sure if I'm expressing myself well if you're looking for understanding, you're, it, would, it would perhaps benefit you to read through all of my work and podcasts and books and whatever you can find. And, um, because all of the things that I write um, are, t are from a place of understanding and non-prescribing and they aren't good and they aren't healthy and it isn't proper and no you shouldn't do it if you feel compelled to you may um, but they're prescription free and therefore the the well from which they arise tend to lead the human being back to themselves back to their true nature um, so that exposure perhaps i'm not saying that it will may perhaps be a benefit to you if um if understanding uh is what you truly seek you're talking about how consequence uh, what is what creates this feeling of fear in us and how if a player enters let's say a golf competition without the the desperation to win then he just plays it to play it and there's no fear anymore um, one thing that I'm, I'm sort of conflicted with, like I'm conflicted with this, with that sort of truth versus if the desire to win is so strong, then you would do whatever it takes to win. So those two things seem contradictory to me. So I'm trying to sort of figure that out. The very fact that one is trying to get away from fear is a problem. The very fact that one is desperately trying to win is also a problem because both are chases. So things must be seen from a set, from a much more fundamental stance as opposed to the precise topic itself. Look more fundamentally and understand that the things that you're talking about they are just details. Fundamentally, they're chases. And it mm. absolutely doesn't mean that you can't win and you can't be free of fear. But if you chase those things, yeah. then it does mean that those things will either elude, elude you or even if you manage to grasp them, they will not last. So I've noticed that I, that I, everything that I am, that I say that, that I even think is just borrowed information or, or borrowed knowledge from somebody else. It, and that I even do it unconsciously, or or I'll even, you know, think at a time. Someone will say something, I think, okay, I'm 
I, like I'm not accepting that I into you know whatever my um, memory or, or information um, and then I'll notice a couple weeks later like words coming out of my mouth that were from somebody else I'm like that <laughs> and it bothers me and and I'll and I do the same thing with prescriptions so both information knowledge memories prescriptions I notice that I take them on unconsciously and I just notice myself acting them out or saying the same thing it, is it is it possible to to hear and to see um others or society or things without without absorbing them into you become whatever you expose yourself to if you expose yourself to society and you imbibe society and you value society then you will become society if you expose yourself to truth and you imbibe truth and you value truth then you will become you will move in the direction of truth do do i hold the truth you are able to access the truth yes but as the person who you believe yourself to be given the years upon years upon years upon decades of conditioning uh, and priming and tenderizing that society has put the car wash that society has put you through you are not able at this time to access truth in any form um, the moment that you try to your mind will go in the direction of science your mind will go in the direction of books and self-help and quotes and spirituality uh, and it will not help itself it, it will not be able to help itself because that is the only world you know and it will take you years just to get out of that miasma so the answer to your question is theoretically and potentially yes practically and immediately no you mentioned that earlier that um that like what the human being is devoted for he's kind of chosen for that um like in my personal case i've kind of taken the societal route to find what I'm devoted towards, like in terms of my career path or whatever, and it hasn't really worked that well for me. Is it possible for someone to connect to like what they're truly devoted towards, like seek guidance for that? Well, not if they ask, what should I do or what should I pursue or what path? Or what profession should I go down? Nobody can tell you that. I yeah, mean, that... you have, you know, this is not a guidance counselor type of thing. Yeah. I mean, those those things have no meaning. No, for sure, because that's basically the route I'm trying to shed. Like I've shed in the sense that, like I would read into the societal means of like taking a psychology test or to figure out like a Myers-Briggs to see what I'm good for. And yeah, think, that's all stupidity. Yeah. yeah. All of those things, yeah. all of those things are, they should all come with a, uh, a warning label on the bottom, which states for entertainment purposes only. It's all nonsense. It's just a joke. It, th those are all characteristics. Those are all personality traits. And they have nothing to do with getting to the visceral, um, nature of a particular human being and what he is genuinely desirous of. Um, there's no test that one can take. Um, and that is why a human being must become, must society proof himself if he wishes to look for the truth, if he wishes to not waste time in his life, if he wishes to truly reach his potential as a human being. He will recognize that all of these tests and all of these programs and doctrines and concepts um, and strategies that society has put forth are all a flea market until he looks out his window and sees nothing but neon lights and cardboard and snake oil salesmen until that happens then he will fall for all of those things 
for years and years and years. And those will obviously be years and years and years, which he will never get back. Could you talk about prescriptions? Are they, are they dangerous for prescriptions or how to's methods, techniques, five step plans? They do, they do not have any effectiveness whatsoever. And it is the only thing that society uh, is founded upon. That's what prescription means. My question is, um, in I guess in relevance, yeah, it's in relevance to what the na- the title of this room is. Um, how do we know when something is the truth? There's no, you know, there's no test you can take. I mean, if if um, I would say the greatest, perhaps the best way is that if you go to a particular stream and you collect water from the stream and the water purifies you and you can tell and you can feel it and then you go to a different stream and that water makes you sort of sick um, and uh, then the place where you go which does something to you on a visceral level, be it radically changes the way in which you see things, um, not just for change purposes, but it opens up a world to you that inside of you gives you feelings that you've never had before in the direction of harmony, in the direction of um, sincerity, in the direction of purity. And that tends to be in the direction of truth. So you have to examine your interiority to see what did this really, what effect did this have upon me? Because the truth, in all truth, is is the most powerful force in the universe. And it tends to have a profound effect on human beings. And I think that's what one must monitor and use as their guide. Um, the question I had was, um, well, first, I want to give kind of um, a prequel to the question. Um, a quote I recently heard was, um, the best advice is embodied. And, and it stayed with me because there was something about that quote that resonated as truth. And when I started meditating on the embodiment of truth, I've, I've reached a lot of blocks. So I wanted to ask if you could explain what the embodiment of truth feels like, looks like for you personally. Um, I would deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, there's some things that are just very difficult to describe. And, and the words that people use and phrases people use, everyone has their own particular meaning of what those things are. And so they make it, it, it's very difficult to communicate through the bridge of words because words have uh, an extreme limitation in their universality um, across different people. Um, so, I, you know, the, you, it's difficult for you to bring a word and then me jump on the word and say, well, this is what that means. Um, there is what I call devotion. And if a human being is devoted to the truth, then um, it is not an intellectual affair. It is something deep and visceral within them um, that they can't help but to constantly look for the truth in whatever situation they're in, as opposed to trying to find the answer or the correct thing to do or the proper thing or the right thing or whatever the books and the business books say. Those things tend to have no meaning for them. And what they're always looking for is, well, what is the truth? And so that is a visceral devotion that's a human being whose interiority is directed um, and is very much aligned towards seeking the truth. When I discovered your work, uh, I was reading Direct Truth, and I I felt a lot of what I um, was reading in my bones. Like, it, it was different than before. Um, after that, I had a experience of really heightened clarity that lasted about five days um since then uh, that clarity's decreased quite a bit and 
you know, I feel that my devotion to truth is sincere, yet I feel this unknowing or like insecurity since that clarity that I guess had the ability to see has dwindled since that time. And I can see that I had this belief that, you know, there, there are some moments of clarity that are enough to dissolve that conditioning, you know, of the self or I guess leave it at conditioning. So my question is, does clarity like kind of come and go as, as one sincerity matures or? Yeah, the more than one sincerity matures, the move to the more they move towards clarity. But what must be understood is that if um, if one comes to a pure or clean river, uh, and then after that they jump right back into the mud pit, then they're going to get dirty again. So <laughs> the human being's default state is to live in society, and while it isn't just the living in society, because one can live in society and absolutely seek the truth, but it just so happens that human beings don't just live in society, they inculcate and they, they, they imbibe and they believe and they value society. And therefore, um, that exposure begins to take them back towards um, that realm. So therefore, whatever things that they've experienced before, um, given their brief exposure to truth, uh, tends to be washed away because of the re-exposure to all of the lies. Society is nothing but lies, and that's what must be understood eventually by at some point um, by a given human being if they genuinely seek the truth. That must come into their viscera somehow, in some fashion, through some means, through some vehicle, um, and it must come to stay. And until that happens, the reconditioning uh, and the return to the default societal state um, is going to be the order of the day. Okay. Do you mind if I ask one more question? Okay. Does it... I like what you say as far as kind of reconditioned there. Um, I would... I wanted to use the words that don't really aren't really accurate, but say like or ask, is it kind of painful to go back to that? But painful is not the word. It's it's just I I do not want to. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to word it. I'm sorry. Uh, well, there have been clients who have told me that they'd rather die than go back. Um, yes. <laughs> once, once a human being um, tastes truth um, in in any field and whoever they may be, um, then all else all else um, pales in comparison. Um, as long as it was a deep felt communion with the truth, and even if it was brief. Everything else in an instant becomes black and white um, as opposed to that color. Um, so that, that tends to be a very common sentiment um, uh, for those who, um, you know, who tend to read, I guess, something that I wrote. And I don't like saying that, but um, I almost feel like, a, you know, apologizing for that. But it, it, that is the experiences that I've had from the feedback that I have received from human beings who have read or heard what I have spoken, and it has done that sort of thing to them, which led them to say, for whatever reason, not that they should, um, that they would rather die than go back to the old way of living and to the societal ways. And that isn't a good thing or a bad thing. That just happens to be what people say. Um, how does one like stop having like expectations, right? Because in society, with well, the well, there's no, like... there's no how to stop doing something. Like, there's no, I can't tell you go do seventeen jumping jacks and four somersaults and you'll stop having expectations. There's no how to. There's, there's how do you raise your eyebrows? I mean, there's no how to. How to is a totally uh, false and anemic societal concept which has no merit. It is valueless. It is a scam and a sham. It is completely superficial and cosmetic. Therefore, um, 
if one finds themselves having expectations and the expectation is bringing them pain, then they will naturally move towards stopping having expectations if the pain is sufficient enough. All things happen by themselves. I have a question around the statement that is for this clubhouse. So this, if the sincere need guidance, it tends to come. How does this play into age? And for those that are, let's say, entering society and becoming and realizing what their full potential is, uh, how can they balance the overwhelming response that they get from society in betrayal and uh, fitting in with this innocence that comes from being young? Um, well, I don't understand what you mean by balance. Um, there's, there's no need to have equal parts poison. Poison shouldn't play a part at all at all. So society is pure poison. So when one is entering society, um, the one of the most powerful things is for a human being to become wise when you're when they're young. The combination of wisdom and youth is an absolutely unbeatable combination um, because it is so profoundly rare. I mean, uh, wisdom is rare in old age as well, but in youth, particularly so. Um, because the youth are swallowed whole by society. Um, and th so if one is able to expose themselves to truth at a young age, then they will over time develop a natural armor against society. How can one put themselves in a situation where they can expose themselves to this kind of truth? What are ways that would benefit those that are entering society specifically to this notion? By reading my work. I had a question on uh, controlling the mind, I guess transcending the mind. Is breath a tool uh, to... No, it's all false. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, I understand words take you away from the truth and uh, trying to be intellectual uh, does the same thing. That makes it hard to ask a question, but I will try. You mentioned earlier in one of the previous sessions that um, really good art doesn't have an audience. Uh, I'm not sure if you meant that, <clears throat> meant that literally, but... Um, well, I think that you're paraphrasing in a, as a misinterpretation. Okay. I didn't say that really good art does not have an audience. Is that something that is art does not seek one. Okay. Uh, but if if you equate that to truth somehow, uh, why won't it attract humans to itself if it is so liberating? Well, I didn't. That's what I, I just said. It didn't seek the audience. Okay. You're the one who said it doesn't have an audience. I didn't say that it wouldn't have an audience. It may, it may not. Um, okay. But, but the artist who is creating the art, if his art is pure, he is not looking for... Uh, the audience to pat him on the back. Yes, okay. How can you not be trapped within your own mind? You have no choice but to be trapped until you. You re until you understand the truth. Uh, during times of suffering and uh, you know, in places like hospitals, value decreases. But when I come back uh, you know, to society, value again i give value to words other people's reactions things where does how, why does value come come back because or, society is the only thing that you have known for your entire life by virtue of like the experiences in my life i've come to the conclusion naturally that society is filled with people that want to sell snake oil um like tricksters and i've come to a point where I'm genuinely afraid that I'll lose um, a lot of my youthful years following more untruths and I genuinely seek more of the truth um, would like the best exposure to the truth be to expose myself to more of your readings or yeah I, I, I as much as I dislike saying it the answer to your question is Yes, I mean, I, there's so much material out there that I have put out from 
direct truth podcast, the private discourses to the um, to the, the the discourses on the website to the podcasts that are available um, that are available to the public, uh, and it is it is not. I don't like the fact that I tell people to read my works. I never do. I don't have any interest in someone reading my work. I honestly don't care. And, uh, you know, I receive, I don't know how many emails per week. I stopped counting and I get pages and pages of letters from human beings telling me that they've transformed just reading the work. And, and if I'm perfectly honest, it doesn't really do anything for me. So I don't really have any interest in telling anyone to read my books. And in fact, I might even remove the books one day. One day. I just don't care. Um, but I must answer the question in the most objective um, and um, plain faced way that I can and say, yes, my work is going to be the only exposure that you have for truth. Uh, I not, and there probably is somebody at 27,000 feet in the Himalayas um, who, who absolutely is um, is a uh, an individual who knows the ultimate truths about everything, um, but with the exception of that, uh, I've never found it. And quite frankly, if it existed, the first person in line would be me reading that work wherever it may be. I'd be the first person in that line, buying the podcast, um, reading the work. There would be no one ahead of me to discover if somebody out there, if John Cooper or Bill Smith, whoever there may be out there who is writing about pure truth, I'd be the first person in that line because there is nothing in my life that is more fundamental at the central core of my existence than the truth. What individuals throughout history have influenced your thinking or exposed you to truth? Nobody. The, the, you have people like Jesus Christ and Buddha, who themselves found truths, but their writings are utterly meaningless. Their, their writings have been around for thousands of years, and I've read them, and they do nothing for me. And they haven't done anything for anybody else either, because they're prescriptive. They do this, and they don't do that, and they've totally ruined the whole show. So Buddha should never have written anything. Um, and, and if he was going to write something, it should have been purely and plainly for the sincere individual. Anything that is written for the masses to make the masses understand is complete, just garbage. It, all, of, all of the truth from it has been siphoned out. It has been reduced to bare bones and skeletal. Therefore, it's just cocktail party conversation. And this is what, this is what must be understood is that human beings are interested in reaching the masses. They're interested in having followings. They're interested in having you understand and believe and to imbibe and to uh, have an angle for to, to convince you. And they don't want to convince you of anything that's wrong or um, that, that they think is bad for you. They're not evil people. Um, but they're, the very fact that they have an angle that they want you to believe something itself is false. And the very fact that something is, something is meant for the lowest common denominator makes the thing not worthy of consumption by anyone with a bone of sincerity in their body. Looking at your work and seeing how inaccessible, I mean, for me, you know, a, a $500 course on, on confidence is inaccessible to me. What choices do I have and, and how do I arrive at that? Well, I, I've put, the fact that you're talking to me right now um, is one thing. Number two, I have, I don't know, how much material is out there that um, is available to the public out there. Um, so I've put so much out there um, that that is not um, associated with any kind of fee. Uh, if you wish, if it moves you, you can explore that. Not that you should. Assuming I'm doing something and I want to you know, explore it deeper. And there's another individual who I believe un understands that thing deeper. Is it that the guidance will come not because I'm going to go and then ask that person to teach me them because that would then be a prescription they would apply 
from their own experience, but it will actually be my sincerity in trying to deeply understand the thing that will lead to the answer coming versus being given. Is, is that a fair yes, that's, that's 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 in the proper direction. Yes. Is the truth different for everyone? No, there are some universal truths. Well, what must be understood is that every single situation, every single circumstance has a truth. How do you know when you're free of your mind? There's no point in asking that question because you're nowhere near it. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually an investor. I invest in you know uh, the equity markets and the secondary markets, uh, and I know you've um, uh, you've worked you know with some you know great investors as, who you count as your private clients. So I was wondering, like, is you know, is money, uh, you know, what is the truth, you know, behind the great investors? Is it, you know, like what I feel is it's 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 reading a lot, you know, into the subject matter, and and you know that is a big part of of this craft. Um, so what if well, you it depends observed, what you what you mean by reading a lot. So if it's about analyzing a company, it's, you know, just reading uh, as much as possible about the company, about the industry um, to be able yeah, to. Make there's it. no real characteristics that you can take from other people. I think that's a that's a fraud, fraudulent, really, uh, behavior that doesn't go anywhere um, to copy if, the characteristic of other people. Not not copy, but are there some indivisible truths that you have observed maybe about investing, Not not necessarily about the investors but uh just there is no such time. thing there is no such thing as investing okay uh can you explain a little more on that like it's just a detail the human being who seeks truth seeks the truth in whatever it is that he or she is doing there's no truth that's separate for in quote so called investing that's a man made concept there, that isn't that doesn't exist in nature. So there's no truth for that versus something else. The human being will always seek prescriptions. He will always seek how tos. He will always try to find what the other people are doing, who are doing it well, and try to copy them. Um, none of those things are truth. So it is. It it is about finding the truth in whatever one's craft is. As opposed to trying to find a better way of doing it. Could the idea of seeking truth by itself be an abstraction that creates... Yes, yes, if one considers seeking truth because it's good for you or proper or correct or whatever it may be, that's just another way to gain pleasure. Absolutely, one can prescriptionize it. I, I understand that, that transcending the mind, there is no how-to for that. I, I understand that. Uh, one thing that I've I've sort of noticed, though, these past weeks after reading your work and all that, one thing I've noticed is that virtually every action that I do in the day, whether it's checking emails or, you know, going for walks or anything, uh, I'm doing them almost unconsciously as if I don't even know that I'm doing them. And, and then recently, though, I'm starting to be conscious of that, not because I'm trying to, it's just that I, 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 I sort of can see, okay, you know what, I am doing so-and-so activity or whatever. Anyway, my question is this, is that, is that, so is sort of understanding that most of our actions are done unconsciously and then even, and just seeing that, is that sort of a, a good starting point to one day, you know, <laughs> transcending the mind? Um, sure. Anything that involves a um, an, an actual realization of something that had no prescription that preceded it um, moves in the direction of of truth. Yes. My question. Um, I asked a question earlier. I think uh, I mentioned that if one were, I, I say if one. I, I I'm stating I do. I don't. I don't I don't expect you to believe me, but if I claim to have sight and have cleansed myself from prescriptions, I asked a question a week ago, and I asked, is the, the mind um, preventing me from going after something I desire? So, And you said, no, the mind is making you believe that it's in your way. Um, and I guess I gave the example of 
Uh, a specific example is I wanted to discover a truth about a specific situation or thing I'm going through. And I start to think about it and I start to gain some sort of clarity. But my mind actively, I, I, I've noticed. If you me. truly attained what you profess to have attained. Yeah. Then it, you would not be asking the questions that you're asking. You are, under a, you are under a flawed concept that you have attained what you have attained and you have not. And it isn't a good thing or a bad thing. And it has nothing to do with me believing you or not believing you. But you are so rabid in your belief that you have attained it that it's causing you nothing but consternation. Is examining pain a, a way to find the truth? It tends to end up being prescriptive because you can examine one pain and then another pain will follow and you'll just keep examining forever. So it tends to move in circles. But I mean, I guess it could be superior to trying to get rid of pain, but um, it, 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 it tends not to go anywhere. Uh, so there's a lot of content about how to tame the mind, how to conquer the mind, all the things that go against the mind. So my question is, and it may sound counterintuitive, but would total submission without resistance to the mind absolve you of the mind, or does that just breed recklessness? No, it won't, because you're doing it for an ulterior motive. Therefore, the mind will see right through you. Is a suffering a fantasy? Do you have suffering? Yes. Is it a fantasy? I don't know. Do you feel pain? Mental pain, yes. Is it fantastical? No. There's your answer. Uh, let, let's, let's say you're trying to pursue something um, courageous that's different from your peers. How do you have the courage to... Uh, there's no how do you have the courage. I mean, there's, no, there's no store that you can go buy courage. I mean... Um, that, that that's that doesn't go anywhere. My question is, why do flow states become so difficult to reach? All that you chase is impossible to reach. I'm curious if you've ever needed guidance and if you received it from God Himself, not a human being. I have a question um, because I, I know that you're very particular with your words and they're not always aligned with the, diction, the dictionary definition. Um, so when you speak of sincerity and devotion, um, can you explain uh, in, in your understanding what do you mean by that? Something that is genuine, that it is not an ulterior motive, that it isn't a chase, that it, it isn't. It isn't done for cosmetic purposes, but it is because of a, a genuine, true, deep longing. That's the general direction in which, it, in which it is. Beyond that, it's very difficult to explain. So my question is, you know, about chases, you know, when we are feeling or chase anything, is it untrue? Because, you know, by chasing something, we're only you know, reinforcing the fact that we don't have it. And that, you know, even if we do chase a feeling, those those uh, those feelings are just fleeting. Um, I don't understand the question. Uh, so just if we when we're chasing something, it's just we're, by chasing that thing, we're sort of reinforcing the fact that we're devoid of it in, you know, in the present moment and that even if we do achieve, uh, you know, a feeling that we're that that those feelings are impermanent and and only fleeting. Yes. Therefore, so what? No, I'm just wondering the truth behind why all chases fail. That that's my question. In essence, I guess. I think it really depends upon how you truly feel about chases. I will reveal one thing to you. Just because you understand the English language does not mean that you understand what I say. 
There will be things that I say to you that will go completely over your head. They will sound innocent, and you will appear that you've understood, but you really haven't, and I will not explain. My question is, what is... I'm sorry? My question is, what is? I honestly do not think that you're ready for any of these answers. These are, these are all questions at arm's length. They're general, they're spiritual. They have no meaning. They're not gonna do anything for you or anybody else. Does physical fitness help to understand or seek the truth? No. Why'd you block me on Twitter, you fucking pussy? So what you're witnessing here is exactly what you talk about in society. You have the filler of society who has uh, nothing else to do with their time but to troll people and to use bad language. This is exactly the product of what you see in, um, in the world, in society. Just filler. Thank you. In your writings, you talk about not chasing things, but um, that a master actually uh, creates the circumstances that a result arises by itself. Um, do you do that by seeking the like core truths about a situation, or is there any way um, to do it? And another thing to ask here is, when I sit and try to think about a topic and to find truths about a topic there is this fear in me that says is there a way for you to find every piece of truth in this topic how do you know you find the number one truth or whatever the most important truth about a topic well, you'll know you. you found the truth when it is effective and it is lasting because the truth is the only thing that works these time and truths are correlated or uh, like uh, you will experience the truth as uh, as so like it like how how they map in the one's life no there's no guarantee that people will experience truth in fact the vast majority will not and that is not because they are unlucky that is because for whatever reason they are not devoted to it uh, is there a physical location within the body uh, for the mind? Uh, is that the brain or is that, uh, I guess, is the mind at a certain location in the body or is that like a, I guess that's my question. Yeah, and I would say the question is largely irrelevant because it doesn't matter. If, what if it was in the leg? How would that affect anything? The more I realize the truth, the more I understand that there's, nothing that I want more than freedom from my mind. Um, that just is becoming more and more clear by the day. Um, however, what I am now struggling with is that I'm seeing that everything that I've chased over the last few years, everything that I've pursued from my career has not been what I actually wanted to do. Um, it was just, you know, going around in circles. So I'm not asking for what to do. Um, I'm just hoping that you can um, expand on what the path to identifying where I truly want to go looks like. So it is a systematic. It is a systematic and exposure to truth. I mean, the individuals who uh, who ultimately find the truth do so after years of exposure to the absolute truth, and that transforms the individual from within. There is nothing that anybody can consciously or intentionally do or any action or activity. How, how does one validate instincts? Well, I think the first thing to understand is that all the things that you call instincts um, are hidden under conditioning. You bask in the truth alone. I feel like a lot of us are getting that down, but then going out into the world and having enough juggernaut energy to bring that into the world, that... Uh, that's where the struggle is. Is the well, well, what do you mean by bringing it into the world? Being the truth as opposed to feeling it when I'm alone, as opposed to then going out into the world and getting all of the world on me, is the 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 compulsion well, or if one if one understands the truth, that he will 
more easily understand what is a lie. And so the person who understands the truth can walk through lies and not be touched by them because he recognizes them as lies. The individual who is affected by them is the person who believes that lies are truths. All right. So just if I want to be that or I feel compelled to be that in the world, then do that. And if not, just be it by myself. Yeah, those are all prescriptions. I can't answer any of that stuff. It doesn't do anything. I could right. say yes to you. It wouldn't do anything for you. Is there anything more after the emptiness of mind in truth seeking? That has no relevance. There's, if you cannot ask about something that's in the future and you have no concept of, and then you want to ask what's after that, when you don't even know what the thing is after which you are asking. I actually experienced uh, the arrival. I had it for uh, around four days, and then uh, I lost it. <laughs> and uh, I was wondering if you could, uh, I don't know, maybe dig yeah, a little all bit the danger will come. It. All the danger will come to you when you try to chase it. The reason that you had it in the first place was because you weren't chasing it, and it arose organically. So whenever you chase those things, they go away from you. And quite honestly, even though you had the arrival, um, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. the The permanence of living a life of truth um, is the ultimate arrival. So the, any attempt to chase it is simply a pleasure chase. As a seeker, can I rely on my intuition as a guidance? No, because your intuition is hidden under miles and miles of conditioning. So your native intuition, yes, but you will have to um, get past your conditioning in order to access that native intuition. In these uh, tough times, uh, COVID, uh, uh, we are becoming more of self-centered and trying to just take care of ourselves and not doing much for the community. And that also- Yeah, you're, you're very us. new here. You're very new here. Therefore, my words are not going to mean anything to you. They're just going to be French. I may as well be speaking to you in French. Community has no meaning. There is no use in doing things for other people. This, this, this entire thing of doing for others and doing for the community is complete nonsense. At the end of the day, the only person is you. It is all about wisdom and wisdom inside of you. And none of that stuff is going to make sense to you. It was all meaningless, and you're not ready for it. So there's no point in going forward. Do you believe there's any utility in seeking the guidance or seeking guidance from others? Or do no, you think no, that no. Okay, has to come from within? Well, even within is another because you're conditioned. So sure. even when you, when you look within, you're going to hear the voices of, quote, others because others are, other live inside of you. So it isn't even within. Sure. It's, only, it's, only, it's only available in the truth. So does living alone help? remove this conditioning that you're talking about no no it's not going to because the vein in which you were asking it is a vein of which okay well if i have a trick in which i live alone will that work and the answer is no because you have an ulterior motive it's had nothing to, you could live in the middle of main street and if you didn't imbibe or have any interest in society then uh you wouldn't be affected by it so that would be truth as well so it has nothing to do with the physical removal of yourself. It has everything, everything to do with how much you value society and the world. How do you balance um, living there in the no world? There is no balance. And, okay. There is no balance. And there's no reason to balance living in the world because the world is complete false. Everything in the world is false. It doesn't mean that you have to leave the world. Um, but anything in the world and everything in the society is false. Therefore, it has no place in the... Uh, life of a sincere individual uh, it has no parts there's no poison that's part of the balance you don't balance poison with anything else poison is just pure poison what role does service play uh, nothing in the vein that you're asking about it you're coming at it from the standpoint of spirituality and compassion and goodness and service and it's all meaningless that has no meaning it is all ego based and you're doing it because it makes yourself feel better and therefore it has no relevance things that arise as a as a natural consequence are fine. Things that arise as a direct attempt to achieve and to do are false. What about in terms of self-discovery through service? Um, you're reaching. Uh, you're trying to use all different kinds of words because you are addicted to the idea of 
of spiritual concepts in goodness and kindness and all that stuff. And it's not a good or a bad thing. But you're just going to keep trying to maneuver the words into the direction of that. That's where your heart really is. And that's fine. I wanted to know if sincerity shows up because of one's intensity or it gets cultivated on its own without any how question. I don't know where sincerity comes from. But generally, um, when an individual is sincere, then they begin to see things, that they begin to seek things for the purposes of seeking for the thing itself, um, as opposed to doing it for an ulterior motive. But where exactly it comes from and why it comes to a particular human being in a particular domain versus another, I don't know. Um, but it, it, I guess it can be cultivated if one realizes that without it, there's no chance to achieve any truth. Um, yeah, so my situation is that like I'm stuck in a job I hate doing, uh, and I'm just trying to get the financial uh, independence I can to escape it. Um, but like I've tried, you know, everything I can think of, trading stocks, um, starting a business, and uh, nothing works. Um, I... I found your work about a year ago. Um, it hasn't helped me. I'm still stuck in, in the same situation. Um, and it just feels like, you know, whatever thing I do is just like another wrong step. Um, so I'm not going to know if, like what to do at this point. I can't, I can't tell you what to do. Um, what can I do that can help me, like, solve my problem? You're asking me the same question again. I can't tell you what to do. When a human being decides to truly get somewhere, he genuinely does. With this pandemic situation, I recently um, experienced a loss of uh, two close family members. Um, it's a tangible pain. And how do you cope with that grief? Um, I'm not worried yeah. about my own um, Yeah, death, there's no but... way that I can tell you how to cope with the grief. Um, first of all, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, it's you. a terrible, terrible tragedy. Um, as to what you can do to lessen the pain, you know, these things tend to run their course, and there's really no one who can alleviate that for you. There's nothing that anybody can say that uh, to try to make you feel better or cheer you up, because these are visceral, real, um, tragic things that, that affect the life of a human being. And to try to diminish that in any way would actually be to trivialize um, what you have actually gone through. So, and, so I, I would not recommend trying to trivialize it, um, to try to make yourself feel better uh, or, or try to feel worse or whatever it may be. It is the gravity of the tragedy is the gravity of the tragedy, and there's really no getting around it. Thank you. This means a lot. I appreciate sure. it. Good night.